Lexi. Hi, I'm Morgan. We are in the NDSU darkroom right now with the lights on and we are going to show you how to create a pickle camera. So the materials you're going to need are two pop cans, some scissors. This would be photo paper, but we're going to use just a regular piece of paper. You're going to need some pins to poke the pin hole. Some black electrical tape and sandpaper. To start, you're going to take your can and you're going to cut off the top. And then the other can, you'll cut in the middle or as high up, just so that you don't have this little rim. to make sure they fit together. So, they're gonna be a little hard because they are the same size. Be careful not to cut yourself because the pop can is sharp. There we go. And like that, you have your pop can together. Now, you're gonna figure out where you want your hole. So, because the mellow yellow can is larger, we're probably going to put it on the mellow yellow can. So you take a pin and you poke it right where you know that the cans won't overlap. So I'm going to do it right in the corner of this Y on the mellow yellow. And poke it through, just like that. Now you're going to have to sand the inside of the can. Go ahead. You don't want any like sharp metal poking through because it could wreck your image. So next what you're going to do is take a piece of black electrical tape and put the tape over the poke hole so no light gets in your can. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your photosensitive paper, load it into the dark room with the lights off. Load it into your can, just like this. The cans are hard to get together sometimes. You're just gonna have to work with it a little bit or cut the edges so that it comes in at an angle. But that's like a last resort sort of thing, just so it doesn't get in the way of your image. Just like that, and you're going to tape around the edges of the can where they overlap. You're going to want your photo paper on the bottom so that, cut, you're going to want your photo paper on the top so that water, if anything, if there's any like liquid or water in the inside, it won't get on the paper, which could wreck your image completely. Okay, now you're gonna take your black electrical tape and wrap it around the can, like so. You wanna block out all the light, so make sure you're wrapping it really good. Multiple layers. All right, so you're gonna finish taping your can all the way up, so no leaks. Might need a little more. We have some bins in our can. You just want to make sure. Yeah, let me see this. There's a little hole right here, and that'll let in light, and that'll completely wreck your image because the light's getting in. So you're gonna want to do everything you can with this black tape to block out the light. Okay, so to show a little bit easier example, we will take our tape and Cut this little piece off so that we have this covering up the hole. And then we will take this, cut this off, and wrap it around the seam of our can. Make sure you don't cover your other tape as you're covering the seam. That's another problem with this can is that we covered the hole on accident. There's gonna be mistakes. Have multiple cans. Have multiple cans in case of accidents. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so next we're gonna show you um, previous images that we took with our own pinhole cameras. Mine, I did solography, which means that I was I left my pop can out and in a spot for several months. You can do it up to like a year or more. And then I just took the um, tape off my can and left it for it to develop that long. And then I took it out of the can. And as you can see, it discolored the image because of how long it was exposed to the light, but it tracked the sun. And it's that's what the waves are in it, is it tracking the sun. So that's another possibility with these pinhole cameras. Do not have to leave it out for several months. Um, for my pictures in class, we were only able to leave it up for 10 to 20 minutes because we had several takes of each picture. The thing to note is that the bigger the can or the bigger the box, whichever method you decide to use, the larger the image you're allowed to use. So I used larger cans for this. This obviously wouldn't fit inside these little Coke cans. If you had a big box, you could have up to a very big picture. Okay, so we are currently in the dark room at NDSU. Um, I am going to go over the process in developing your photos. Um, so there are three um, separate containers to use for the chemicals. Um, first is the developer. Uh, you leave it in there for three minutes, let it soak, um, constantly agitating it, which means moving the container back and forth, um, which is going to make your image appear on the white piece of paper. So you're going to see it like this, and it'll appear like this. Um, next, you're going to put it in the stop, which stops the chemicals from forming on the crystallized paper. And lastly, you're going to put it in the fix for about five minutes. It basically just washes off all the chemicals, um, lets it sit and agitate for a little bit, and that is the last step. This is the final product. If we were to take an image with our pop can, we would simply remove this tape. And you can do this anywhere, it depends on where you want your picture taken. But you take this tape and remove it. You can remove it for however long. Um, I know with Lexi's images, she did them for 10 minutes. And with mine, I did mine for three months to get the solography. But um, you could remove it for 10 seconds, a second. It's just gonna take the image and the light is gonna go through the little pinhole and develop onto your photo. And then you're gonna quickly close it so that it's not getting any more light that you don't want. So basically what this process is, is it's taking the light from the sun, reflecting into your can, onto the paper, and back out. What you're left with is a developed photo of whatever the can was facing. So what this can does is it acts a lot like a camera. It lets in light to develop the photo and then closes, a lot like the camera shutter. Obviously your finger can't move as fast as a camera shutter, so it creates a very different and unique image that can only really be created using these kind of cameras, these little pop can cameras. And that is how you create a pinhole camera using a pop can. Feel free to re-watch this video. Um, go ahead and follow our instructions. Um, we would also like to see your developed photos, so feel free to drop it in the comments and we hope you enjoyed. Thanks guys. See ya. <sighs> I'm done.